Welcome beautiful crushers to the $50 to $100,000 bankroll challenge where you can learn to take the money in your back pocket and turn it into a life like this. Think it bigger. You can learn financial freedom purely from playing the game that you love. Now I've recorded around 35 episodes of this. All of the episodes are going to be uploaded directly to Elite University for any elite members and it's just gonna be given to them as an extra bonus. I could have sold it for another like $500 per course, but I decided to upload it just for the elites. I also have over 100 hours of the $50 to $10,000 bankroll challenge, every single second of it recorded, uploaded to Elite University, and God damn it, I'll give you next 10 people to sign up as Elite or Super Elite uh, if you use the code Charlie is handsome. I mean, okay, to make it easier. C I H, capital letters, you'll get 42% uh, off. Done. Uh, that's, a, that's pretty big. 42, I mean, I mean, that's a lot. Okay. But enjoy, enjoy 10 of you. Go. <laughs> and uh, in this episode, there are so many hands. I'm even going to break down one that I play that is extraordinarily different to how everybody else plays poker. And this is where you're going to be learning not only to play theoretically sounds, but to cultivate a deep and profound thought process that takes care of the dance between the intuition and the intellect in a rational and grounded way, but also a very creative out of the box way to come up with a lot of plays that are gonna set you apart from being a good poker player that's a little bit GTO imbalanced and predictable to a great poker player that is thinking on the level above your opponents. Enjoy this episode, gorgeous human beings. Shout out to you, here from Bali. All the love, peace. I should go for the check-in. I'll go for the snap call turn. Nice. I couldn't think what the fuck Andy had, honestly. I couldn't think of a single hand that I'd expect him to turn up with there apart from maybe like Queen 9. Go for your 3 exponent, just in case. Sometimes recreational players are not very like pot size aware. So 6 big blinds to them on $12 is uh, it's the same way as they're in a big pot or a small pot. I mean, sometimes you've got to hope. In limb pots, that's very often the case. You can just overbet huge. Go small enough that he wants to peel some ace highs. Some jack ten of hearts stuff we got drawing dead. It's just impossible to get value from these situations. Pray for ace deuce, I think, is the play. Pray for Jack 10. Ah, it's, he's bluffing. He's bluffing or he's got ace deuce. Every now and again a queen. Just go huge. Oh my goodness, ace deuce. 10 4, huh? Jesus. Checking back the turn like a sneaky mother. Most of my time there was thinking about if there's a a stack size where you're deep enough that if you have the 10 of spades, you can shove and get them to fold another 10. Because they, they just put you on 10x of spades. So if you have like ace offsuit and then 10 of spades, you can just 300 x pot shove <laughs> or whatever it's gonna be. I mean, there has to be a stack size where they're, they're gonna have to fold everything, right? I'm wondering what GTO would say about all that. Probably doesn't like it. GTO. <laughs> All right, pretty good 10, whatever. Would prefer like an offsuit four, but we'll take it. Let's check. It's hard to go for three streets here. We'll call it this guy in the, the big line. Nice. All right. What are we trying to get value from here? I don't know. No, dude. Have a king. Block can't be terrible. I 
All right, so two combos of king, queen, three combos of queens. Should I, should I just make this fold? No, I'm making the fold. So it could be value raising the ace king, but super unlikely when it goes that quick. Okay, we're just gonna go big, big. Got a good hand. <laughs> of all the hands we could have here. We could also have sets and two pairs than the actual straight itself. But that block and the queen's pretty rare. Uh, the question is whether to shove here. I think the answer is going to be yeah. We can have enough perceived bluffs, I think. There's a lot of people that call themselves coaches these days and I've met hundreds of them and there are a few people that really stand out and a few people that have truly helped me and this is why I want to share this with you. Remember, I'm not getting paid a single penny. This is just coming from my heart. I genuinely want people to be able to become the most realized, reified, crystallized versions of themselves. The person I'm introducing you to this week is called Mariah. She's a very, very close friend of mine, extremely powerful, and she offers one-on-one -on -one services. You can go check out her website if you want to see what, she, what she's about. I, I guarantee you will love her. She's so beautiful, so intelligent, so curious, so so passionate about helping people, and she's, uh, she's just one of the best human beings I've ever met. I have so much love for her, and I, I want more people to know about her because she's not always the best at marketing in comparison to the, some of these people that call themselves life coaches. They're getting all, charging thousands of dollars, and they, they also just happen to be toxic people themselves. She is truly walking the talk and she is embodying all the lessons that she then helps other people learn to help them be the best versions of themselves. And if you want to be a crusher, you got to be the best version of yourself. Peace. I love one of, one of my favorite things about the retreats that I've been hosting is getting people that don't normally sing, singing, and they end up just loving it. It just takes a little bit of deconstruction of socialization. You know what I'm saying. You know what I'm saying. Alright, with this guy calling out the big blind, I think we I think we can get away with a little bit of a loose seabed here. Got it. You gotta use the emojis when you got them. I have to play more in line against the, the pros here, but doesn't mean I have to play <laughs> in line against the recreational players. All right, we're gonna be raising. I wonder if GTO likes these size raises on these boards. I think it's kind of sexy. Big ass full bet, dude. Kind of like a quick check here. I think a quick check, we get a lot more stabs from like sixes and stuff like that. And then there's a good chance they're gonna bet call it off. Obviously, we can just be behind it, but when we're not, ho ho ho. Ho ho ho! Yeah, you got a friend. I run it twice. As long as you, you agreed to let me hold twice. I'm, I'm down for that. 
No, that's one, thank you. All right, you've, you've kept your end of the deal and I deeply appreciate it. I appreciate you. All right, this hand should blow your mind if it doesn't, you're not paying enough attention. We open threes under the gun, a little bit loose, but with two recreational players on the table and with the skill edge that we have, it's a must open. We get a call from one of those recreational players. We get a call from probably a professional within the big blinds. Flop is ace, jack, six, rainbow. And I don't think we can profitably bet here. We could consider a small bet, but there's too many hands that will continue with gut shots. We can consider a big bet, but there's just too many hands that will consider with either gut shots and back or flush draws and, or just like ace, x or jack, x. It just doesn't lead it to being profitable. So we're going to check and we're not giving up in the hands, but maybe we delayed C bet or something along those lines. We'll see what happens. The recreational player who's playing 50% of hands stabs very small. And let's, let's first of all, before we go into the rest of the hand, break down what this means. He's playing 50% of hands. What does that include? Does it include ace, deuce, offsuit? Probably. Does it include king, six of hearts? Yeah, it's going to include these hands. So we can understand that he's got an extremely wide range and he definitely doesn't need to have an ace to be betting here. He could have a jack. He's a recreational player. He could just have something like pocket deuces. So it's extremely wide range. Now the big blind is a, a professional player and he is raising. And now... What are we thinking that he has? And you have to always do this when you're playing poker. Break down the hand analysis, the range analysis of exactly your opponent and what they're representing, what they're saying they have and what they actually could have in these situations. It's the bare bones of poker itself. Now, what could our villain have in the big blind ace, jack, six? Well, technically he's representing two pair plus to, to check right here. He's not gonna have jack six. He can have ace six suited, only two combinations, and he can have pocket sixes. He would have three bet aces and jacks preflop. So three combinations of pocket sixes, two of a six and i think he probably would have squeezed even ace jack off suit given the fact that our uh, recreational player friend is playing 50 percent pretty valuable information we now know that he's only really representing five value hands that are two pair plus he could technically also be check raising for value something like ace 10 ace 9 if he thinks he's ahead of the stabbing range on the button which would make a lot of sense now what can we do here he's representing very thin there's also a chance that if he had something like pocket sixes specifically, three combinations of the five that he's representing, he would actually just call knowing that he's still going to stack the button quite often and he might still get action from me if I happen to have a jack or maybe an ace that's going to check raise or a bluff that might check raise as well. So I actually think he'd more likely call pocket sixes than raise them. I think a six would probably raise for protection. So if we're facing two combinations of a six and then a bunch of potential bluffs, knowing that the button is going to be betting as wide as I said he would, and maybe a bunch of hands like ace-8, ace-9, ace-10 that are just trying to squeeze a little bit of extra value out of the recreational player's very wide range. Well, how much of that will fold if we raise again? I think a lot. I think everything apart from two pair plus will fold. And here's why. It looks so strong when I'm doing it, raising into a bet and a raise when the recreational player is already quite short. I think the, the big blind is just going to fold ace-10. I would fold ace-10 100% of the time against somebody doing this. And this is the thing about exploitative poker. You need to get inside of the mind of your opponent. I wouldn't do this against a recreational player, but I would do this against a professional player, knowing how they think and being on the level above this. Now this, as you can see, is a situation that 99.9% .9 of people would not play the same. It's a small pot, but when you keep playing these small pots better than your opponents, this is where you get this red line graph. This is where you start crushing, and this is where you set yourself out as a great poker player instead of an okay GTOE poker player. I hope this was instructive. There are many, many more hands like this within the episode and the upcoming episodes. All the love, you beautiful crushers. I love you. Peace.
<laughs> he says, ha 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 ha. Ha ha indeed, my friend. Ha ha indeed. A kind of scary buff to make. We just run into ace queen or pocket queens or queen jack or like a sticky ace king a lot of the time. Can't go any bigger because you know those hands are full basically any size. So I'm going to size that he can fold an ace, he's going to fold kings. Kings, kings, kings. Got the old sticky club blocker, I see. Nine number there. It's making me very skeptical. Time. You got it, my friend. You got it. Never cash out, guys. They take more money from you when you cash out. Jack off here to continue. Very hard for something like Queens here to continue. A little trick you can do against the regs here. This one is tough. We're, we're not folding, but a lot of the time that happens. <laughs> but odd odds. <clears throat> Here we're going to go size the a jack, will hopefully fold. GG may rake the living sh** out of people, but there's no denying it. These are the softest games online, surely. Actually, that might not be true. The softest games out of sites that a lot of people play. Like this just blows stars out of the water. All right, we're going for your 15 big blinds. Could always, could always get cool by ace four of clubs. Just saying, but let's make some other stuff fold first. Yes, nice. This 
give this a go. Okay, flop. Run into like sevens and eights here a lot. <clears throat> I think tens probably actually four bet a lot. Um, I don't know if he has seven eight suited pre. I'd be surprised. So this isn't sevens and eights anymore. This is something that beats aces or nothing. Sixes. Excited not to raise the flop. Did he call seven eight pre? Probably does call seven eight. King Queen of Spades. Fold it. Takes a very specific type of play to show up bluffs there, so congrats to him if he did. And balanced by the rest of the pool, it doesn't. <coughs> Film, this ain't gonna be an interesting one. Beautiful people, check out the Discord. I'm sure I've told you about it already. It's the fucking best poker community you'll ever find, guaranteed.